Hello everybody, this is Prowl and I have a super important video for you today where we are going to go over some things that you must know before you make a LEGO Fortnite world. We're going to cover single player, we're going to cover multiplayer, we're going to cover game options, and we're going to cover what to do when you first get inside of your world. So let's get started. So first of all, what is LEGO Fortnite? Well, it is an open world survival crafting game that you have to open Fortnite to play. It works off of the Unreal Engine inside of Fortnite, but instead of the popular Battle Royale that most people either love or hate, you get something more similar to like a Minecraft or a Rust once you're actually inside of the world. So if you don't like Fortnite and you're considering this game, you should still consider this game because it doesn't really have much to do with Fortnite. The only thing it really shares is the skin and the moat system, which is how Fortnite makes their money in the first place. You don't have to participate in it. You never have to buy anything for the shop you can play this game 100 for free so there is a consequence of this being tied in with fortnite and before i go over that if you could help me out please click that like button and drop me a comment down below if you've played already what are your first impressions and if you have not played yet what are you hoping to see in the game but those early comments likes and subscribe buttons for a channel of this size really help out a ton so i would love it if you guys help me out and do those things they don't cost you a dime just go ahead and click the buttons for me please but one of the consequences about this game being tied into fortnite is it is an always online service. So when you make a new world to play single player, and yes, you can play single player, you can play alone, you don't have to have people joining into your game, the world is still online. It's not stored locally on your computer, on your Xbox, your PlayStation, whatever. So if Epic's service is too busy, like right now they have 1.9 million people playing. I don't think there's a wait time currently, but it's possible that you could hit wait times during like really peak crazy hours or events or something like that that are maybe going on in the game. Um, or if their service goes down or if they are doing an update or something like that, you may have time when you cannot play your single player world now typically epic's pretty good about this their server capacity is good i imagine if this game continues to grow in popularity even beyond what it's at now they will probably add additional server server capacity usually it's only a problem during big events like when the battle royale switches over from a uh, new season or new chapter or there's some type of like music event in the game or something like that that's really about it so i don't think you'll have much of a problem but just know that it's possible that that could occur one good thing about it though is it's tied into Fortnite's in-game system. So uh, adding friends, inviting friends, voice chatting with friends, all of that stuff is actually incredibly easy to do. So that is a really nice benefit. Epic's known for good things with that. If there's any parents out there that are watching and your kids are thinking of getting into this or you wanna maybe have your kids play with you, there are parental controls that you could put on a kid's account. So just keep that in mind. They even have that taken care of. Fortnite is somewhat a family-friendly game if you wanna cater that experience to your children. Now, before we get into the multiplayer, let's actually talk about creating a world first. First of all, you can go to your locker. If you already have skins in Fortnite, you could go through and select whatever skin you want here. The skin is not permanent per world. You can you can pick whichever one you want anytime you log into the world. As you can see, a lot of skins have already been converted over to have Lego versions, but then there's also many that have not yet. And then there's some more. You see this little like uh, I guess like wrench and hammer icon. There's some that they've converted, but they they still haven't fully converted them. Like this is supposed to be an orange pumpkin head dude, kind of like kind of like this guy right here, but orange, and they, they haven't converted him over right yet. Now, once you've downloaded Fortnite, you have an Epic Games account, and you get logged into Fortnite here. Just scroll on down to the Buy Epic se section. Is probably where you're going to go your first time, and just click on Lego Fortnite and hit play. And once you're fully loaded in, you can go down here. You'll have a select world button where I just clicked and you can either select a current world if you already made one, or in this case, we're going to create a new world. You have many new world slots that you can create. I do not know if there's a limit. This makes it feel like there might be. And you can select either survival or sandbox. Survival is a survival experience with a bunch of options we'll go over. Uh, sandbox basically you have full like access to like a creative style inventory where you're not restricted by having to collect things and there are certain preset options that you can turn on or off within the sandbox experience i've not played it yet i don't know if you can like do like i don't know free flying and things of that nature but in any ways it's more of a like it's it, it takes away the survival part of the experience more or less 
Um, now, there are some pre-selected seeds for you here um, that you can load into if you like to. Or you can type in a seed number. And if you put in the seed number here and somebody else were to type in that same same seed number, they would get that same world generation that you had. But of course, in their own world, since we're not talking about multiplayer yet. So you could type in a seed number there if you want to. It's totally up to you. And you have a host of options here. Enemies on or off. It does say that you can block progression by turning enemies off. So I would recommend you leave them turned on. These options, by the way, are not changeable once a world is started so make sure you get your options right you cannot change them later um, you can have hunger turned on and off you do get hungry food is pretty abundant so it's not really that big of a deal um, you can have temperature turned on or off the effects of cold heat rain etc can have effects on your character stamina is for sprinting and pushing so there is a stamina system there it is not tied into combat in any way which i do i do like that um, we have eliminations it's not what it sounds like you can be eliminated meaning you you can die in the game it is not like a hardcore mode if you die you do respawn so you will want eliminations probably turned on unless you you really don't want to have to mess around with that PVE experience. You want the game to be rather easy to where you can't die. Um, you can have drop inventory upon elimination. If you have this turned on, you'll drop a backpack with all of your contents down on the ground. If you're more of a novice, you're not a big PVE person, I would recommend you leave eliminations on so you at least have a little bit of challenge for yourself, but turn the drop inventory off. That way you would like respawn in with all of your things still on your person. Um, but for most people, you'll probably want to leave that on. Friendly creatures like cows and and sheep and chickens and things like that you'll probably want to keep that turned on if you turn that off it may block progression as well because you cannot get i guess like certain items that you can craft with and such and then finally villagers villagers uh, do seem to play a pretty big role in the system unless you're doing some type of no villager challenge i would recommend you probably leave that turned on once all of your settings are good to go we'll type in a seed number here and we'll hit start it gives you that warning you cannot change after starting and then now it will do the matchmaking thing and it will load the world up now once your world is started this is where multiplayer can come into play first of all if you create a new world while you're in a party your party person can join the world right away but for the most part when you're going to control a new world and we'll talk about this dude here in just a second briefly we're not going to go through and actually play but i want to give you a couple pointers before you get started um, but hit the map button whatever system you're on hit the map button and go over to players only you the server owner has the player button here you can see that you can go in and you can invite other players to your world by clicking on your friend section and inviting these players to your world it will initially put them in your party although you don't have to stay partied with them if you don't want to once they're in your party they will show up up here you can then optionally join the party chat you can be in game chat or not if you'd want to be in voice chat do it if you don't then don't it's not a big deal and once somebody is in your party and you go to this map section and you go to players that player will appear in this list right here click on their name and you can give them a key to your world you can give up to seven keys to other people this is really important because what this means is you do not have to be online for your friends to keep playing in your world if you give them a key so if you're playing with friends, family, people that you know online, whatever, if you want them to be able to play in this world without you present, give them a key. But remember, you can only give out seven of them. Now, people that you give a key to, they cannot invite other people to your world. They can't give out keys. They can't squad up with somebody and have them join. Only you can invite a person to the world that you own. I have not seen a way thus far to hand ownership over of the world to somebody else. So you can have a total of eight players in the game. If you give out all seven of your keys, you plus seven. And I think I'm not 100% sure, but I think you can also invite up to three members in your squad, giving you a total of 11 players in the game. 
Now, let's talk about that part really quick. Let's say you wanna have somebody come in and help you play in the world, but you don't wanna give them access to be in the world whenever they want to. You wanna have control over that, or you wanna let them in for just one time, or whatever the case may be, that's fine. You can invite them to your party, and they will be a guest in your world. As long as you are logged into the world, they will stay logged into the world with you. If you leave the world, it will boot them out. So seven keys plus you as eight players, plus you can invite three as guests, meaning 11 total players should be possible in the world. Me personally, first of all, I think this is pretty good. I do like it. Second of all, I hope to see Fortnite expand on this. So if anybody Lego Fortnite is listening right now, we have big communities. This may be a small channel, but I do run a bigger Minecraft channel with a lot of people that would actually like to play with me. So give us the option to make a bigger server. I'll pay money for it. I think it's fair. You guys have given us a good system to start out with. So if you could include something to where I can whitelist 100 people and maybe you have to play your cap it at 8 or 16 or something like that just because of the, the resources and what the server can hold, that's fine. But please give us a way to invite more people. That'd be great. Okay, and last but not least, when you first open up your world, this is what you will see. Well, you'll see different things depending on what seed number you have. Like that biome right there looks really cool. And the way that this game works is it looks just like a Fortnite world, but it's not Fortnite totally. These are Fortnite looking grass and ground and trees and rocks and things like that. But the world will have all sorts of cool Lego-y things all throughout, like these chickens right here, like these pumpkins right here and more and anything that you decide to build. You'll have Cuddle Team Leader will start out in your world with you and will guide you through the beginning of the game. So if it's your first time playing, I recommend stick tight with Cuddle Team Leader, do everything that she tells you to do, and she will teach you how to play the game. If you don't want to do that, though, and you just want to go out and start doing your own thing, that's cool. You don't have to talk with Cuddle Team Leader. Go out, start exploring and doing things in your world, set up camp, do whatever it is that you want to do, and Cuddle Team Leader, well, she'll be waiting there for you if for some reason you decide you want to go talk to her. As far as my best advice for getting started in the world, well, food seems to be pretty abundant. Things like pumpkins are pretty easy to find early on. Collect a bunch of them. Start collecting yourself some materials. You have sticks and rocks on the ground that you don't have to punch or chop or whatever. You can start to collect those. You can set up a crafting bench and you can start crafting axes and tools and all the other things that you need to play around in your world. Um, you see the hunger bar up in the top left hand side. You probably want to eat some to fill that up. You have the hearts up there as well which is your health you do have ways to expand that that i will not go over right now but we will go over in the future in this channel as i do intend to not only do guides and tutorials on the game but i do have a let's play series where i'm learning the game myself and i would invite you guys to come along with me and learn with me as we go through this awesome game that is lego fortnite if you enjoyed this video there's a like button down below please help me out and click it Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what is the coolest thing you've seen about Lego Fortnite so far. What kind of things are you hoping this game can do or will do in the future? And subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much, everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye.